All right. Our next guest uh, is uh, Lasse Eriksson from Kalmar. Uh, welcome, Lasse. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I know that you just came back from Sweden <laughs> and, you, and you've had a, a sharp object up your nose now quite a few times. So, uh, <laughs> are you okay? I, I, I'm doing fantastic, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so no problems with uh, with uh, that testing, yeah. so to say. Yeah. I tried that also a couple of weeks ago, and it wasn't that pleasant. No, really. no, but it's it's important, and uh, I yeah. feel good that yeah. we do the test. So, so absolutely, then we're yeah. back to business again. Yes. Well, we had a discussion just now with uh, Ope, Carolina and uh, Jaakko about strategy. And I guess what we're really talking about now with you is implementation of strategy. Yeah, you could say so, because uh, I mean, I've been with Cargotech actually about five years and, and started in, in a, let's say, group position with uh, digitalization. Uh, and, and that was more of a, let's say, strategic position in mm -hmm. that sense. Uh, and and uh, we started certain programs at that time. Um, and, and I'm happy to see over the years, how the implementation of those yeah. actions has has proceeded into businesses, into benefit of our customers. So, mm -hmm. so, so that's 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 what we have been doing <laughs> yeah. quite a lot. But Lasse, can you give us a little bit of backdrop of, of Kalmar? I'm sure uh, not uh, everyone in the audience knows what Kalmar does or, or what is the area of operation. So, if you could, uh, with a few words, and I know you have a couple of slides yeah. here, uh, open up that. Scene. I, I will do that, and uh, I will start with the with the cargo tech. So, so uh, Kalmar is, is part of cargo tech, as was mentioned already, and and the purpose of cargo tech is is to provide uh, our our customers uh, smarter cargo flow solutions for a better every day, and I will kind of come back to that what that actually actually means in in practice. Um, I, we are a, a company consisting of uh, multiple, let's say, business business areas. The main business is being Kalmar, which is providing uh, cargo and load handling solutions to ports and terminals, as well as then uh, industry, as well as distribution centers, etc. Uh, the second second uh, business is Hayab. Uh, well, I, I guess many of us, especially Nordics. Know the term yes. high up, so so the loader, he, he so, up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the loader crane on a, on a truck, and overall high up is providing solutions, these load handling solutions to to, to trucks uh, and, and on road transportation, and then then the third uh, leg of our cargo tech business is McGregor, then then providing these solutions, cargo handling solutions to to ships, yeah. um, and. Uh, even though we are as a as a total total a, a business of size of you know 3.7 billion or such, um, so it's not a massive company as such on a global scale. But um, then, if you look at a little bit the impact that yeah. we can have on the on the cargo flow globally, those are actually surprising numbers when I looked at them first time. Yeah, like you're yeah. involved in one fourth of all. Yeah. Uh, Transactions. That, that's like a container uh, movements yeah. in, 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 in the ports and terminals and all over the globe, basically. So actually, some of our solutions touch them and, and actually one fourth of, of, of every move is somehow managed by our solution yeah. that is provided by us. Yeah. And that is, of course, including not only equipment, but also software solutions yeah. and, and such. Yeah. Uh, and, and amazingly, I mean, if you look at the next one, I mean, three out of four yeah. uh, vessels in the in the world have some kind of equipment uh, from McGregor. So, in that sense, uh, quite a quite a big impact, and uh, and that's why we talk about the kind of the on the previous previous slide about the kind of the uh, overall cargo flow and, and yeah. how we can make it smarter and for a better everyday. Meaning, of course, we have a high high ambitions on sustainability, mm. for instance, mm. in that sense. So that's a bit about the let's say overall cargo tech and uh, I mean how does it look as as offering? I just yeah. just to kind of make it a little bit more concrete. So yeah, that's good. So so you see a little bit the different businesses businesses and what kind of equipment. I'm not going through everything, but just to give an idea that uh, typically they are like uh, mobile equipment or cranes or, or, or you know, some, some uh, components or, or um, manipulators that are attached to a yeah. uh, bigger, bigger hole. So. An intelligent. Uh, and equipment. yes, of course, when you look at only the hardware, you sometimes forget the yeah. intelligence, but, uh, but I, will, I will come back to that actually here when, when we talk about uh, mega trends that are impacting our customers specifically in Kalmar business here. So, so absolutely, it's, it's, it's a lot about the uh, key enablers, the yeah. digitalization, automation, those kind of things that help our customers to be and, and, and operate uh, more safely 
more uh, sustainably, mm -hmm. uh, if that's a word. It is, uh, <laughs> and, I believe. Uh, and, uh, and more productively. Yes. Uh, I mean, those are the three things, of course, that we drive for and, uh, and try to enable. And this is wh why those are important. I mean, uh, vessel sizes, those that are carrying the containers, they are getting bigger and bigger, so more containers on a, on a per vessel. And that means quite a big, big thing uh, if you look at it from the port. Uh, yeah point of view. Yes. So you still need to kind of unload and load and operate. Yeah, the ecosystem of, in which you operate is huge, actually. It is, it is. And, and all the different <coughs> players in that need to be uh, uh, operating on a, on a, with high performance. Yeah, and aligned with each other. Yes, absolutely. So then the kind of the data, transparency yeah. and those kind of things uh, come, come to a question as well. I mean, the, the numbers that you just showed, they are massive. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been uh, a, a forerunner in, in what at least a couple of years ago still was called IoT, i.e. basically sensors transporting, uh, 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 recording and transferring data from one place to another. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on, on uh, the events of this year? I mean, we work, for example, with Maersk in Denmark and, and DFDS, big logistic companies that are your partners and clients, I guess, or I don't guess I know, <laughs> sure. uh, based on the numbers alone already. And, and of course, the uh, global and international logistics business what hit, was hit really hard in yeah. the spring. Uh, you also took a hit, but you were able to uh, get back on your feet really fast. Actually, this morning still looked at the, the numbers uh, and, and your reports, and uh, it's almost puzzling. How, mm. how was that possible? What happened? <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll go through a little bit the, what happened. And, uh, and uh, of course, I mean, in sometimes in, let's say, January, we started to, started to feel feel that uh, the world is changing the first impact. Of course, we have production, for instance, in, in, in China. Yes. So I guess that was the first first area to, to get the hits. And, um, and, and of course, that was more on the, let's say, supply chain side, yeah. where we felt the first... Where you produce first, your machines. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. <coughs> and, uh, and then, but obviously then in, in let's say, let's say March, uh, March, mid-March, uh, everything kind of, uh, well, not fully stopped, but, but, mm. uh, but a lot of things happened. and. Uh, what was interesting at that time was, was that um, we were very quickly able to see where we stand actually on in real time because yeah. of course we have put a lot of effort during the years on IoT, mm. connectivity, data gathering and the infrastructure around it. So, so that suddenly became a really valuable asset yes. uh, for us to, to see specifically where things are changing, which customers are suffering where the or are. actually which customers are doing better than before. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. that was interesting also to see. Of course, the, uh, the lockdowns in different countries changed radi radically the, the numbers, but, but, but then it was possible to go deeper yeah. to the customer level to understand, okay, hey, actually our offering, for instance, service offering should be tailored towards these customers in this way mm -hmm. and for these customers in that way because yeah. of the differences in yeah. their, let's say, utilization mm -hmm. and things like this. You talked about a digital window that you built into, uh, into your customers and I guess it's a two-way window that, uh, because otherwise there would be no dialogue. Yeah, yeah sure. I'm, 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 I mean, this is a kind of the, what we see and then, then in a way what we can do uh, yeah. through our, let's say, service organization, for instance, mm -hmm. or sales organization. So connect to the customers and discuss in a way, uh, how can we help in yes. a situation like this? Uh, and we did, did a lot of things, and uh, it's not only digital things, but, uh, yeah. but, but in a way, through this window, so to say, we came up with a couple of, uh, let's say, also new services that were uh, introduced mm -hmm. uh, quite rapidly just to help the customers that had can, had can you share some of those services? Uh, not, you... not a lot, but <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> not a lot, but uh, but in a way, how I mean, simple things like. Um, uh, everybody's um, worried about the kind of the if if the for instance the cabin of the machine is mm. clean after yeah, usage yeah, yeah, and yeah. those kind of things. So how can we help the customers that they can focus on their business mm. and and let us take the kind of the some of the let's say sanitation yeah. uh, part of the part of the uh, let's say things that need to be done. Yeah. So well, your infrastructure has to uh, ha had to be in in tip top shape for you you to be able to do that. Uh, are there any sort of key choices over the years? And it didn't happen at the end of March. It was built before, obviously. Yeah. Uh, were there any key choices that you could highlight or, or key moments uh, it, it, over, over these past, I don't know what, what is a good uh, amount of years to mirror it to, but let's say five years where we realize that, okay, this needs to change, this needs to be in place. 
uh, for us to be able to do something in the future. Yeah. And I'm referring to, uh, for example, uh, a discussion that uh, we quite often have a s slightly joking call, call or ask uh, 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 if uh, companies have master data or monster data in their basement. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit around that topic? Were there any, or can you determine any specific moments in time where you've taken some decision that's clearly taking you to the next level? I think the fundamental decision was, was made somewhere in, in 2015, actually. Yeah. And, and that was about um, kind of the, just the connectivity itself. I mean, that there was a conscious decision that, yes, we will actually uh, enable this on everything yeah. that we deliver. Digitalization of everything. Yes, correct. <laughs> so, and, 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 and that is, of course, just one piece of it. Of course, there's been a lot of other, let's say, investments in the company yeah. for digitalization. And, uh, and, and that, that has really now paid off suddenly, you know, yeah. in a yeah, way, yeah. in a new way. Um, but but um, that was one fundamental thing, the decision that, that hold holds and, and still holds. And, uh, and, and uh, of course, now through the crisis, it's been, of course, paying back a lot. A lot. Yeah. But, um, but then there are other things as well. I mean, what happens kind of under the hood? I mean, the yes. monster data, master data. Th we've been investing into that as well over the years. Yeah. I mean, seven years ago, I guess we started yeah, a yeah. function uh, just dedicated for that. And, you know, it's a long journey. Mm. Um, there's always something, something to be fixed and, uh, uh, and, and, and improved. But uh, it's been a lot of, lot of good progress there. And, and if you don't have that right, so, so it's, it's, it's impossible, impossible basically yeah. to deliver any service yeah. to the customer. It has to be either. transparent, so. adaptable, and I guess uh, plastic or mm. resilient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, do you feel or have you seen a change in culture in, in, in uh, 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 cargo tech uh, group or, or uh, uh, Kalmar in particular, of course, uh, because of this? You've taken leaps, you've you sort of introduced a totally new ingredient on top or, ne or next to the sort of the engineering part, the traditional part of the company. Has, do you feel that the, the DNA of the company has changed due to this? I would say the interesting thing during this year has been really the change in the, in the demand, mm -hmm. uh, both from the customers as well as from the internal organization towards, let's say, of course, obviously more uh, digital solutions, yep. remote solutions, whatever they are. I mean, uh, of course, in, in March, uh, Everything, everything kind of uh, had to change suddenly, yeah. and and in the in the crisis, everybody starts to think quite quickly that mm -hmm. okay, how how do we actually solve this now? Yeah, this is a big thing. So so how do we change actually everything we do and w the way we do things? Yeah, and and uh, it helped a lot because the pressure was coming at the same time, of course, from the customers yeah. as well as from internal organizations. So internally, we had a everybody was suddenly super willingness to listen to what is possible. To be done yeah. with, the, with the, let's say, digitalization and uh, and these these tools and um, not to say that it, there wasn't interest before, but in a way, suddenly everybody was really on, on the same boat, mode. <laughs> yeah. so to say. Um, but and and of course, when customers started to kind of also mm. request solutions for, of course, remote diagnostics and uh, these remote configurations, parametrizations, support, yeah. even commissioning and stuff like that. I mean, suddenly we had to kind of totally like. Uh, package everything into yeah. uh, uh, in, a, in a good way to, to make the best out of it. So. Well, quite often you see, uh, and I don't know if you can answer this question, but I'll ask it anyway. You don't have to if it's, if, if it's not something that you can elaborate on. But quite often you see that the front runner in any business area, basically, who has this asset in good shape and is able to do what you're uh, able to do, uh, grabs a, a, a bit of a new position in the ecosystem in which it works. Mm -hmm. Have you have you seen that development uh, ongoing in in your context? You are you are bringing to the market something that hasn't been perhaps there for mm. before, or has been there but only as an idea. Mm. Do you see new business models or opportunities mm. arising from this right now? From let's let's put it that way that um, I think it's especially in the middle of the crisis, it's very important to take care of the customers yeah. and the customer relationship. So so whatever we do is is towards the customer helping them to succeed even mm -hmm. in even during these difficult times yeah and obviously i mean we strongly believe that uh, this will be remembered after the crisis as yeah. well um, do you think this is going to be a permanent change in in i mean in the speed of of of, of uh, adaptability and, and bringing stuff to the market at least we have learned a lot yeah so so i i think there's a permanent permanent lessons learned so to say yeah and and i think the 
kind of the what has happened and and and, and this kind of experience, mm -hmm. which is of of course has a lot of let's say negative things as well. But yeah. uh, but if you take something positive out of it, is it is exactly this kind of adaptability yeah. uh, and resilience, if you <laughs> want yeah. to put it that yeah, way. Yeah. So there's a question from the audience uh, asking uh, how you would describe your journey in in leading the company uh, with the data and and, and KPI uh, KPI setting. I guess uh, what uh, the the question is really about is. How has it evolved? Uh, was it difficult first, and how have you been able to speed up the process? We touched upon it with uh, OPE also, uh, the same topic. Maybe, maybe if I just reflect back, to, let's say the five years uh, yeah. that I've been with the company. So, uh, as I already said, it started a little bit from the, uh, let's say, from strategy perspective, and uh, we kind of uh, uh, highlighted certain key initiatives that we need to do and a lot of those have to do with enablers actually mm -hmm. first because you have to have some sort of infrastructure in place yeah. but <coughs> very quickly on top of that comes the kind of the business business um, uh, kind of the benefits and values yeah. and yeah. things like this <coughs> and and really the customer focused initiatives that are kind of a f using the enablers to actually deliver better value to the end customers mm -hmm. in the end so um, i mean looking at the question a little bit here so so i would say that we started with some more like uh, enabler related kpis for instance yeah. but quite quickly turned that into actually some something that touches the actual business revenues and and the benefits for the customers yeah the outcomes outcomes yeah so speaking of that <coughs> where do you see uh, uh, in your case the more impact on on the digitalization thing <laughs> uh, on, on the supply chain side uh, where you uh, have your own suppliers and then you construct whatever you construct or on the sort of demand and client side or is it is, is there can you determine even that difference I mean, I mean it's very very different and both are important obviously so, <coughs> so and and on top of that I would also kind of uh, maybe extend the supply chain to all the other internal benefits that yes. come come out of it so so what I've seen over the years is, is, is investment in all, all the areas mm -hmm. and, and all are important. And I mean, every initiative has, has their business case in a, in a way in mind. So, yeah. so why we do things mm -hmm. and why we invest in, in certain areas. Internally, it's, it's uh, sometimes very easy to kind of uh, determine the, actually the business benefit yeah. and calculate that through. But um, it could be in terms of savings, but, uh, but in a way, in the end, that is not really helping us, to, not necessarily to increase the revenue side of things. Yeah. So, so, uh, but if internal efficiency is very important and ef effective, and, uh, and 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 so forth. Uh, supply chain side, we can maybe elaborate that a little bit more. We have quite a big uh, initiative ongoing around that one, actually bringing uh, way better transparency between us and our suppliers yeah. and our customers mm -hmm. uh, in in the kind of the order to delivery process yeah. overall. Uh, and then, then actually, I was about to ask you that question. It, yeah. is, it, is it perhaps maybe even the same process? In a way, if if you talk about what you just said, that uh, you you provide the end customer with the transparency yeah. to the very root of your production, yeah. basically, yeah. Yeah. and and seeing the yeah, you know, in a way, but but that that is quite focused in a way, order to deliver. It's a, mm. a lot about from sales in a way to to manufacturing yeah. to of delivery. course the interaction suppliers and yeah. then to the delivery. But then there's a lot of, of course, other processes internally that we mm. we as well have, so which yeah. are not directly kind of connected to that. So there's another question that uh, we talked about actually already before with you, uh, Lasse, when we were uh, discussing this interview, and the question is: uh, Has the appetite for autonomous or driverless technology increased during this uh, Corona pandemic? And we talked about it in a bit of a broader perspective last time. That uh, is there a role from for humans in this <laughs> space anymore? <laughs> Definitely, there's a role for humans, and uh, and uh, of course, automation is a is a huge trend in in our our uh, business. Uh, absolutely, we have been there uh, forerunners for a long time, um, and uh, and and that is still extending, extending to new segments mm -hmm. in in our business. Um, everybody's aware what happens in in automotive and you know yeah. self-driving cars and such but so so it's it's the same things but the, in in our scope of business actually actually that can happen even faster than than uh in automotive and and yeah. become more popular um one one thing that is good to understand that if we talk about the kind of automation of the full terminal yeah. so that that is a, some size of an investment for I the customer I was, so i was coming to that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and and it's not just uh, okay let's change from manual to automation 
you know, there's the human factor, and and in a way, uh, of course, obviously, uh, some resistance sometimes as yeah. well. Um, but uh, but what how we are looking at it is is a lot from the increasing safety mm -hmm. perspective, and and of course increasing the the, the productivity yeah. overall. But I I think the safety factor is something we should not forget because um, ports and terminals globally. I mean, in that business in in general. Every five days, somebody is actually getting killed. Yeah. According War to some zone. of the, <laughs> I mean, it, it it is a little bit of let's say hazardous in in that say, sense. Yeah. So I I see also also the benefits of automation from that perspective mm -hmm. that uh, we are actually saving lives. How about this uh, question from the audience? Uh, slightly actually related to your your answer just now. Uh, how how is uh, digitalization? Uh, helping or enabling sustainability or, or is that the big factor in your planning and absolutely it is it is, it is. so so i can give you just an example which is like yeah. in our offering and public you know in, in that sense so it's easy to kind of uh, throw yep. in in this particular question yeah uh, we are building machines uh, such as reach stackers mm -hmm. uh, so so those that are kind of picking up containers and, yes. and, and, and operating that so uh, we introduced a couple of years back um, so-called echo reach stacker, which has certain, let's say, different uh, transmission, which uh, helps helps us to kind of uh, deliver fuel performance uh, improvements uh, up to 40 percent. So that is a huge, uh, huge impact from sustainability perspective. Yeah. Um, so what we introduced uh, then, then two years or three years back was actually a fuel performance guarantee for the customer if they choose this this model we can guarantee that the fuel performance will be this much, this many percentages less yeah. than the traditional diesel. Mm -hmm. and, and all this is actually based on the collective data from the real operational environments from our customers mm -hmm. who are using these machines and the kind of the, all the machine learning models yeah. and everything that actually can deliver a, a model that predicts the fuel performance yeah. in specific operational conditions. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a very clear link from, let's say, dig digitalization and data gathering to analytics into a new type of offering that yeah. we have now to the market. You have so much information about the surroundings <coughs> and environments where you operate that uh, uh, what sort of uh, elaborations have you had, uh, say, for example, with ports, uh, with uh, you know, creating the uh, logistics as a service package, not just uh, selling the intelligent machines and, and that are doing what you just uh, described, but uh, is that too, too big of a leap or, or is that perhaps on a roadmap somehow? Well, uh, I'm not uh, sure if I go, I'm going to, to details here, but, but in a way that is a clear, clear trend, yeah. I would say, um, and, and some of the, let's say, um, some of the, let's say, ports are looking for such let's say different ways of managing that business yeah. and, and and some of the logistics or, or let's say cargo handling could be definitely outsourced in that yeah. sense and and whatever the business model will be so mm. so i mean there's alternatives there but yeah. uh, but I, I think that that will require uh, both parties actually to to very clearly define uh, the their roles and respons responsibilities how do we do that and, and, and in a way what is the way to kind of really operate yeah. so so it's such a complex environment that there's a lot of variables impacting that and and it, it requires let's say the industry as such still needs to kind of bit mature on, yeah. on, on certain things to, to that's to actually get there. What, what was more or less my next question actually we've been working with a couple of ports also and uh, see that ecosystem and it is complex and sometimes it's extremely uh, developed uh, sometimes it's uh, not, mm. but it is fairly standard. Mm. Of course, there are different uh, ports for different uses, uh, but uh, it, it seems like it's a standardized operation. Uh, that sort of begs the question that why hasn't someone packaged it and standardized it and, and sell the whole thing as a service, basically, to a, say a city, for example? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, maybe it looks looks uh, standard in that sense uh, on, a, on a high level but uh, there are quite a lot of let's say details and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it is a little bit like uh, for the ports also their their let's say uh, business critical knowledge uh, yeah. that they have kind of over the years developed and and yeah. they see that that kind of operation is so the there's best so for much that. qualitative uh, qualitative insight in that process i would say i would yeah. say so um 
however, of course, there's there's a lot of knowledge we mm. have and our, custom, our customers have, and of course, putting that together and, and in a yeah. way coming coming up with uh, let's say somewhat standardized way of doing yeah. things. That's that's an option, but uh, I think there's a lot of different elements in that mm. soup all together. So so it's not easy to bake together. So there are a lot of opportunities still ahead. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. Well, Lasse, we ran out of time. I would have a bunch of questions still <laughs> to you, but uh, uh, I think we're done for, for today. Thank you very much for being with us. It was really enlightening and fun to talk to you about this, and uh, best of luck in your digitalization of everything. Great. Thank <laughs> Quite you, Peter. challenging. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Yes.